we've been saying to women for a hundred years, you can do everything a man can do. Mm -hmm. You should have a career, but we have not disrupted this, the idea that is she supposed to also then run the home? Hey guys, it's Mindy Linscom, your host of the Something New Show, where we like to learn how to live a life worth celebrating. And today I have a special guest. Her name is Jen Campo, and she is a friend of mine, but also I invited her to be on the show because she is probably our show's biggest fan. So um, we have an interesting episode for you today, and I can't wait to tell you more. But first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I know. Well, it's been so encouraging to just be friends with you over the these years I feel like we've become better friends since the show has come out though because you've been listening and you've been telling me how much you've been enjoying it and I've really appreciated the feedback you've provided it's just been so cool though to have somebody out there in the universe saying your show is amazing and so we decided to do something kind of fun today and that is um, we're gonna roll reversal here in a minute because Jen has had so many questions for me mm -hmm. and I said Jen why don't we do an episode where you just ask me questions? Because I don't think all, all the questions you were saying about me, you were like, well, you stuck about this and this. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know if I can just get on and talk about myself, mm -hmm. but I think it might be more natural if you ask these questions on air. So, um, a little bit about you first, you, um, I'm going to ask you some questions cause I can't just only do me. Okay. You, um, have been married for a long time. You have three beautiful children, mm -hmm. a girl and two boys, mm -hmm. and you have an incredible company called The Simple Sort, and that is probably where we got more intimate friends because I welcomed you into my home, Yeah, and you, um, this was my big splurge when I got a new house last year, I said to my husband, I said, the one thing I really want is to hire a company, the best company, to come in and organize my kitchen and my closet. Those are my two areas that I was really, really focused on while you did help me with more. I was, those are my two wish list items and um it's really cool that we both have this appreciation for order mm -hmm. and neatness i was just telling you about my marie kondo um obsession and how i just could listen to her speak japanese all day but back to like what made you get into organizing and all of the things i thought i was going to interview you i know um, just tell okay. me a little bit yeah so i just discovered that it was a thing one day which is insane so i was you know, a mom and I was running a business, um, home staging just kind of off and on. And I learned that people organize and I was like, you mean for other people? And so immediately I just tried to learn everything about it. And I started by adding organizing services to my home staging business, but I just loved it so much. So I rebranded in 2017 as a simple sort just to do home organizing. And it is just like a dream job. I mean, you say like you wanted us to come in, but it was a dream to be in your kitchen and just every day um, to work with clients doing something that I love. And we have a team and we're all just organizing nerds. I mean, so. now how many people do you have? I think we have like 12 right now. Which is crazy. And I've been to your showroom. It's beautiful. Thank and you. you have a whole essentially like a small warehouse of all your bins yeah. that you organize with and your labeling and I mean well, it's my just, husband told me I had to get out of the house because it was all in my house at one point that's why I have a studio now he was like you gotta go there's too much well and I was telling <laughs> too many bins. I was telling you just before we started recording that you've had quite an effect on me um and last night I or not last night yesterday all day I actually cleaned out my closet again I, I tried to do it. it once a year and I literally pared down to own about half of what I started with yesterday and it feels so good because yeah. now I only have um the clothing that fits me mm -hmm. or the clothing that I've worn within the last six months and then there were some items you'd be even proud of me for this I had my seamstress come over on my closet clean out day and there were some items I wasn't wearing just because they needed repair or they needed to be altered yeah. to be my you know size correctly to wear and so she took like about 12 pieces home with her she's gonna alter those and now I'll wear those I just felt like I just I did it. a tidy up of my wardrobe and it, okay. it felt good. Yes, it, it does so feel good. good. It feels like, doesn't it? Yeah. I know. I right it. before the holidays, I feel like, cause that just fills the house with also the additional people, the additional stuff. Mm -hmm. It's and a I great time to get a little bit organized around the holidays. Cause you're going to bring more stuff in probably and yeah. have people over and that's awesome. I love it. Well, um, where can we find out more about your business? 
Um, online, we're at thesimplesort.com, and we're also on Instagram, and we share a lot of our work and our tips, and I have a social media manager who's amazing at doing that because I don't love social media. But, um, great, but you found a way to great. delegate it. Mm-hmm. And um, the handle for Instagram is the... At the simple sort. Uh-huh. The simple sort. The simple sort. sort. Perfect. Sort. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for telling us about you. Okay, well, thank and you so much. And now I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah. Oh, I don't have, be nervous. I have no idea what <laughs> I didn't she, show you these questions in advance. I know, which okay. I love. I actually think it'll be more organic that way. So you just you just rapid fire. You just ask me questions, Jen. Okay, well, you kind of already mentioned that I've been in your space kind of like intimately, right? Like what we do, we really dive into people's spaces and see things. So um, that's one thing I love about my business is I get to learn about people and their stories and they're really fascinating and everyone has a story as you know you hear people's stories all the time and so um I knew right when I met Mindy that she was like just a fascinating person like you're just got this energy and confidence but also just like very compassionate and caring and you know when we first met we were at your old house and I could tell like you you know a go-getter you're (laughs) you're busy you got things going on but um you also just like know what you want, which I appreciate too. Cause we work with a lot of people who don't, you know, they're just like, I don't know what I need, but you were like, I want this, I want this, I want this, but also just very trusting of us being in your space. So, um, my favorite thing to do is hire the best professionals and then just let them do their job. So like even my hair person, I'm like, I sit down and I'm like, just do whatever you think, you know, I love cause that. I know she's amazing. And I look You're at totally you and I trusting. say, hey, do, I mean, obviously there's some guardrails, right? Like, okay, I do care. Totally. X, Y, and Z that my hair stays blonde or whatever. Right, totally. Um, but no purple. But, but, um, but I'm just saying like, it's just really, your team is so excellent. It's easy. It's easy to say, okay, bye-bye. Have fun in my kitchen. You know? Yeah. It's still, it takes a lot of trust and we appreciate that. And you know, we've worked in your bridal shop as well. Mm-hmm. And I was just telling your producer that, um, that, that kind of made me nervous because you've got all these beautiful dresses and we've got like a team of eight or something, you know, but you're just so trusting, just like, okay you know, we'll figure this out. Um, so I just knew that you had something special when I first met you. And so when we got to work together, you know, I just, I'm so fascinated and inspired by you. Mm, And then you. you started this podcast and I was like, what's that about? That's interesting. So I started listening to the podcast and I, you know, I'll listen in the car and I was just like hooked immediately. Um, not only are you fun to listen to, but you have incredible guests, which is probably, you know, we'll talk about it more, but probably one reason, um, you know, you have the successes, the people you surround yourself with. And so I'm always looking for people to inspire me and you have definitely inspired me. So I will you, get into my questions now. My okay. first question is, did you always have this like confidence oh. or was it something that you had to like develop and push through? That's a great question. I don't think I always had this confidence. I think, um, as a junior high, high schooler, everyone has insecurities, right? Um, and I remember just being in an environment too, where, um, I had a beautiful mom, a beautiful sister, yet I did not look anything like them. They were, I remember they were small, petite. My mom was a flight attendant, always like fit, um, always had her hair and makeup very perfect because, you know, back in the day for American airlines, you Mm -hmm. had to be like, just so, um, I mean, they did weigh-ins for their flight attendants back in the day. Flying Which, used to be different. It was, it was I remember flying different. as a kid. It was an experience. Oh, when we flew standby, we had to be dressed up like in, yeah. in I had to have dress shoes on with a dress, yeah. like to fly standby. Yeah. It was a different world. Um, so I, I just think it's funny that now we've put our cutest jogger sets on. I'm like, okay, we're going to go to the airport. We're going to put our joggers on, <laughs> you know, but um, it's just foreign to how I was raised. But, um, but I remember just feeling a little bit different because I was much taller, bigger built than my, my sister and my mom. They're probably a hundred pounds and five foot. So Mm -hmm. I was just like, I just felt different. Mm -hmm. And I remember kind of the pressure of also like, um, wow, is this beautiful how I'm made versus, you know, what I see them to be? Cause Mm -hmm. I felt really not the same, you know? And it wasn't that I felt, um, fat or overweight or anything like those types of things. It was more just that I felt like different. Like I was just like, I'm, I don't look like that. And Uh I think they're beautiful. Am I beautiful too? So I did go through, um, a season of just trying to really uncover like what is 
what makes someone beautiful uh-huh. and where does their, their inner value come from. And that's honestly where I would say that I sparked a relationship with God that was new, mm. um, and more my relationship with God and not someone else's. And, um, just trying to Like I really dove into studying where does your value come from? Where is your worth and how you are divinely made and created. Mm -hmm. And then when you start to like really, like really, really believe like, oh, I was, I was made this way. Like God actually intended for my design. Yeah. Um, While we can make healthy choices, right. To be fit or, um, you know, strong, all those things. We can do some things to elevate kind of, um, how we look, honestly, that had nothing to do or has nothing to do with our true confidence. It's like, you can do all that stuff to the outside and still have a person completely insecure. And what's really cool is I've seen this in my bridal shop. I've seen the most beautiful women. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, they couldn't, they don't need to change a thing. Right. Yeah. But yet they're so insecure inside Mm -hmm. because they have no idea where they're value and their worth actually comes from. Oh, wow. So I would say somewhere, and I don't know that there was one moment, it was just like a constant search for me through high school to really just completely hone in on like, why do I have value? Where does my worth come from? And when I really got to the belief that, you know what, I'm valuable because God sees me as valuable and he created me and he doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. I believe that. And so, I don't know, it just like flipped a switch. It was just kind of like this empowering moment. And like I said, it wasn't like one exact moment. It was just like intentionally studying, believing, and putting truth in my head and trying to like not get wavered by what other people say about me and just being like, okay, but what, what does God say about me? And so, I would say before I went to college, I had a very... Um, and I mean, maybe even earlier, maybe junior, senior year, I just had a really good grasp on my value. And I still today, I'm like, I make mistakes. I definitely don't have everything put together, Yeah. but I know like he loves me. He cares about me. He forgives me when I make mistakes. And I know all the things he says about me because I read it in the Bible Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know what? His creation is valuable. So when I see that, I even look at people and I'm like, you know, that confidence can exist in anyone Mm -hmm. because it's not an exterior thing that we own, that we have, that we do. And it really comes from just knowing who you are. So I feel like that's where it came from. And then I'm really thankful. I want to add for my time at my university for my undergrad, um, because it really encouraged you to like believe impossible things can happen with God. So I just have, I would say one of my spiritual gifts to be like honest with you is faith. Mm -hmm. I really believe anything that's impossible can happen. Like you could tell me that you want to fly on a spaceship with Elon Musk one day. And I would say, I think that's possible. (laughs) I love that. If not you, then who? Yeah. Why not you? Mm -hmm. So I just, I I think that that confidence of knowing who I am and who I'm linked up to, that anything is possible. And so it's just guided me throughout this whole life of 20 some years of being like, Hey, I think I could build a business or I, and actually I love my favorite way to use my gift of faith is in people. Mm, I can see that. Like with my team, Mm -hmm. I just, they, I've hired people at 18 years old that are now, you know, in their thirties working for me. And it's just so cool because when I hire them, I'm like, I see something special in you. And they're like, you do? I'm like, yeah. And then like to see them, they believe that about themselves now too. Yeah. I mean, I don't talk about God with them, Mm -hmm. but but I think just them seeing that someone else sees something in them. Yeah. It's just so cool because then they start to see it in themselves. Like, it's like oh. that light, you know, that like God calls you to have for the world. You don't have to go out there and say it. You just show it, right? Yeah. And I think it. it's really amazing. I know you're like a huge mindset person, but I yeah. think it's amazing that in what I would consider probably the hardest time of a girl's life in middle school and high school that you mm-hmm. recognize that and you found it and you worked on that in yourself because mm-hmm. especially today we see these young kids, you know, in middle school and high school and they're on their phones and they're... Mm-hmm. looking for their worth and their value through likes and you oh, know yeah. I mean and thankfully I didn't have social media right I, mean, I know but it was still hard right oh, it was yeah. still hard in, still in hard. high school it's always in middle school it's the hardest time and I was watching the episode last night of the um when you had your team in here and mm. it's obvious that they are also very inspired by you but that you encourage them to be you know the best that they can do you feel like that is like your purpose here is to like encourage other people and strengthen their faith and confidence or 
I mean, I think it's definitely woven in. I What I like to do is say, hey, this is our company goal. This is why we exist, which yeah. um, we believe everyone deserves the joy of remarkable moments. Mm -hmm. That's like our belief statement here. We believe everyone deserves the joy of remarkable moments. And so when we circle everything around that, it's like not just our customers, but our staff. Mm -hmm. We say, hey, we want you to have remarkable moments. We want you to celebrate personal wins and professional wins. I just finished doing a like plethora of hours of annual reviews. And I started out with, let's celebrate what are some wins from you this year. And then I say, before we even get into professional goals, I'm like, what are your personal goals mm -hmm. for this coming year? And then I start to think, how are we going to get this girl to reach her personal goals? Mm -hmm. Whether it's buy a house, take the trip, um, put their kid in a school that they've been trying to save for. I'm like, all right, we're going to, we're going to celebrate this in one year from now that this happened, but I want to help you come alongside and say, how can this happen? And so we're going to have to kind of backtrack now and say, okay, in a year from now, if we're celebrating that you bought that house, mm -hmm. what does that look like? That looks mm -hmm. like saving X amount every month. That looks like, you know, reaching this number in your sales goals or whatever. And it's just, to me, I think people thrive when someone else says, let's push for your personal wins. Then guess what? The side bonuses, they totally want to help you totally. with your professional wins. Oh, yeah. But if you don't care about their personal wins, which we don't talk about them a lot, right? We yeah. talk about them at our annual reviews. And then once a month, we do a goal setting meeting just to kind of quick check in with them. So it's not like we're always talking about their personal, but at least we know they're there. And then all year long, I can be encouraging them to keep going. And then guess what? In turn, I get the hardest working team ever. Mm -hmm. They're like all in. They want this place to be mm -hmm. humming, to be successful because they see, okay, they don't just care about me and their goal for their company. They also care about me and me reaching my personal goals. And I love celebrating that with them right out of the gate. First thing out in their annual review. Yeah. You're valuing people for who they are and not just what they bring to your team. So the question then is how do you find that balance of like encouraging them to grow but not like outgrow you. Does that make sense? Like yeah. you want them to go do great things, but also like you want to build, like I was listening to your team and you got like Alexandra, right? Yeah. And she's been here for a long time. 13 years. And you have a lot of people who have been here for a long time. So you're trying to encourage them to, to really like accomplish their dreams and goals, but also like, oh, I want to keep you because you're so yeah. amazing. And how do you, that's you know, a that's really a really good, good that's question. That's a hard balance. Okay. So early on, I was always afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And to say that that hasn't happened to me would be false. That mm -hmm. has absolutely happened to me. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people I've developed, raised up, mm -hmm. seen their amazing success, and then they go on to something that they're really passionate about, maybe more than mm -hmm. bridal, right? Um, and the first time that happens to any leader is devastating. Sure. You feel like, what did I do wrong? Yeah. And I want feels like a breakup, right? It I've does. had that happen a couple of times. It feels like a breakup. Uh, yeah. And I want to just say to that leader, because I remember, I wish I could say this to myself, is you might not have done anything wrong. Yeah. Maybe, so maybe you actually just did all, all, all the, the right things. things. Right? Yeah. And then they moved to the next thing that they were supposed to do. So, so back to my ethos that, I do believe there's a God and there is sovereignty, right? So mm -hmm. like if someone is exiting, then there has to be someone coming too, mm -hmm. right? There's a reason for that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do a few things after a few breakups, right? <laughs> I decided to do a few things differently. I did learn from them. Not that, like I said, I don't know that I really did anything wrong, but I learned from them. I said, well, how can I become the company that above all else, they wouldn't want to work anywhere else. Like, how can I attract mm -hmm. people that would be so, like, they'd say, that is a cool place to work. Yeah. So I started to... I have to admit, I want to work here some days. Like, that sounds so fun. I love that. I mean, it's not always easy, but it's it's amazing. It's mm -hmm. like a pressure cooker for excellence. Well, if I ever give up the simple sword, I'll keep you in okay, mind. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> um, but I, I, I decided it's kind of like that thought of, you know, when the girl really wants to date someone or even the guy. I mean, I'm thinking about my boys. They really want to date this awesome girl or whatever. I mean, this is just early stages of conversation. But I say, you know how you get whatever girl you want or whatever guy you want? You become the most incredible person mm -hmm. because then you'll attract incredible the most people. incredible yeah. person. So it was kind of that same thought about dating. I said, I'm going to become the most incredible company mm -hmm. to work for with incredible pay packages, um, great schedules. We do a four day work week, um, great 
benefits. Like we just, and then team stuff, teams, ways, ways to celebrate together, trips. I mean, all the things. You do amazing things. I'm I was, watching it all the time. Like that, that looks like stuff on, you're like a family, right? We, you're a family, but you're hanging with, out together. With proper boundaries. With hard I mean, work, but yeah. yeah well, totally. I was going to say there are still like, you know, family, sometimes you can put up with stuff and like, oh, just, yeah. and just like act like it's okay. Cause mm-hmm. you're family. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't put up with stuff. I will tell you that we, we definitely have accountability and if, there's um, a lack of performance, then there's meetings about it mm-hmm. and clarity. Mm-hmm. And if there's still a lack of performance, then there's um, a departure. Yeah. Okay. So there isn't just like fun, you get to just do whatever. It's like still very accountable. Mm-hmm. But I would say um, I just started to really work on myself to be a very attractive place to work. Mm-hmm. That was the first thing I did. Well, you got that down. So, well, thanks. There you go. I mean, it was, it was a, a journey. Sure. For sure. Um, and every year in the annual review, the last question I asked Jen is what can we, as your leaders, as mm-hmm. your owners, what can we do to provide more support to you to do your job better? Yeah. So I asked for feedback myself. The next thing I was going to say, should you feel like you're developing someone and then you're like, oh my gosh, are they going to get too good or mm-hmm. outgrow this? Mm-hmm. Um, I've kind of released that a little bit and yeah. it's like, it's the weird thing that comes with maturity as a business owner. Sure. But again, you have to know, am I competitive with my pay structure? Like, am I paying these girls or your team, whatever the best I could pay? Yeah. And is it tied to their performance? So it keeps them engaged with their role so that they uh-huh. want to do well. And motivated. A- and yeah. yeah, I'm motivated. And then, um, am I a nice person to work for? Do mm-hmm. I, do I not stress them out too much or send texts at like midnight? Or, or do I, you know what I mean? I just, yeah. am I a nice person to work for? Am I the top of the line package? Do I offer a good environment for them to work? The things that I can control, have I done my best? Okay. Then if I have, then I literally just release the rest. You have to let go. Yeah. I have to totally let go. So what I, I still stay engaged knowing at any moment they could resign, could mm-hmm. decide to move, whatever. But what I've been told by the people that stay is like, where else would I go? This is a, this is a great. And I'm like, I know that's really cool to hear, but at the same time, I know you also might get recruited or snatched up or whatever it might or be. Or just have life changes. Life that, changes, mm-hmm. move. Like I said, move, have a baby, decide, Hey, I, I really actually want to stay home with this child when mm-hmm. I thought I wanted to work, yeah. but now things change that happens. And you just have to believe in the sovereignty of the moment and say, okay, that was amazing while it was there. Like it was amazing while it lasted. I was all in, she was all in. And now there's a necessary ending that perhaps maybe I wouldn't have chosen, but it's, it happened. And another thing you can do to prevent being totally screwed (laughs) is you can all along take your lower people that have maybe become newer. You have like a a pipeline for training. Mm -hmm. So like I have in the, you know, in the sidelines right now, I have three or four people getting trained Mm -hmm. for leadership, Mm -hmm. not because I think any of my leaders are going to go. I think they're really happy. Honestly, I just did the reviews. They're like thrilled, but, and you know, every year good performance gets raises. Mm -hmm. I I hope people are doing that. But what I was going to say is the people in the pipeline are really important too, because first of all, they're getting developed as a leader and you're always saying, Hey, there's room for growth here. And then should an opportunity arise where one of the higher level positions become available, you're not scared. Cause you're like, Oh, I have three people on deck Yeah. at any moment they could fill in. Yeah. And that just removes so much stress because I have had that where I lost a leader, had nobody in the pipeline. I was like, never again. So we created this whole um, track that people can rise to and, and it's a leadership program mm-hmm. in our company and it's optional. It's if you want to take it, you take it, but you do get a raise for taking it. And then if there becomes another opening, then they can you go on this up. path, yeah. this journey to that. I yeah. love that. What did it look like when you like started, you know, adding to your team and mm-hmm. delegating and passing things off? And that's hard. That takes a lot of trust. And it, you know, it's like when you're building a business, it's like your baby, right? And suddenly you're just like, I'm gonna pass my baby off to someone else. What, mm-hmm. How did that feel? And what did that look like? Was there challenges with that? Well, at first I was a micromanager. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking about my early team. If you're listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I learned, um, you know, that people don't do well with micromanagement. Totally. They feel like you don't trust them. Yeah. So instead, what I've learned is the better approach is to make every job partially a guaranteed wage 
but then partially an earned wage based on performance. Yeah. And that doesn't mean sales necessarily. Some jobs, it might mean accuracy. It might mean, um, you know, making sure like one uh, that our inventory is moved, you know, or making sure that our margin hits a certain amount um, so that we meet our budget. Uh, there's just ways to measure everyone's job. You give me a job and I'll be able to throw a measurable moment to it because some people don't think like that. They just think, oh, this is what the salary is for this job. I don't think that motivates anyone. Yeah. I have found the most success in my company. And like I said, not just in sales roles, we have all sorts of roles. But when I stopped micromanaging, it was only because I, I attached a performance part to their wages and so I didn't even have to watch them anymore because I just didn't worry I was like they're gonna want the money yeah and so they're gonna do an excellent job because they want that money Mm -hmm. and so what's so valuable about that is it like lets us as leaders just back off we don't have to worry I never even hardly check in other than the once a month check-in right when we have our goals meeting Mm -hmm. on how they're doing because I'm like I just trust that they're gonna want that paycheck well, and, and you've set up those expectations in the path of them to, oh, so to know clear. exactly where they have to. It's so clear. I maybe have three measurable items at most for each of the people on my, in my whole company. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just say, hey, like here's your job that you get guaranteed for because I want to pay you and value your time. But then here's your, here's your measurable portion. And you know what they love too? They love that the harder they work, the more they see a reward. Mm-hmm. Because in every other job they've probably had, it's just a flat rate. What's motivating about that? Yeah. yeah. It's like for me too, when I was an employee, I loved that the harder I worked, the more I made. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, it matched, like my effort matched my reward. Yeah. And I think we're like that. I mean, we're not going to go to the gym every day of our year if we're not going to look fit. Right. We're going to be like, well, that sucked, you know? Yeah. I mean? And so I'm just got to see the results. Yeah. You have mm-hmm. to see results. And then it's like, it's like this little thing. It's, Imagine our kids, they, they want to work hard for either an allowance or that little box of Tic Tacs or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. And so I'm just saying it's, the, it's just human nature. Totally. So, and it allows us as leaders to not have to micromanage. It's like, well, I'll see they're measurable here in 30 days. Yeah. I'll be able to check it out when we do our meeting. And then I don't even look again. Mm-hmm. And it's so much freedom. It's so much freedom. Be very clear about the expectations though. Yeah. And the way you want it done and train. Yes. Cause sometimes owners also don't provide the training and resources needed to yeah. do the job well. And that bothers me too. Cause that's I'm just like setting them up for failure. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm like, that's not fair. You yeah. can't expect them to perform at X if you have not provided training. So Absolutely. a ton of training and resources, whether that's you or you have to hire someone, yep. provide all the training you want so that they can do their job and it's clear the expectation and then back off. Cause now, it's just going to be you, up to them. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. I think I always had entrepreneurship in me, even though I didn't know what that was. Do you feel like you have always been an entrepreneur? Because I feel like entrepreneurs have a different mind, really. Yeah. Like it, we work differently than yeah, people. I Do think, you feel like you always? Yes. I definitely think entrepreneurship starts from like the earliest age of memory you can have. Yeah. I, I really, really do. I think some people don't realize they're an entrepreneur until they look back yeah. and somebody highlights some things for them. But let me just give the listeners and viewers a few ideas that they should pay attention to. Like, were you the kid that wanted to have the lemonade stand? Mm-hmm. Or did you just want to ride your bike forever around the neighborhood? Yeah. I wanted to have the lemonade stand. Yeah. Um, I remember one of my first jobs ever was um, painting and stenciling addresses on curbsides right oh. in front of people's houses. Oh. I just walked around with a bucket of spray paint and little numbers. And I was like, Hey, can I please spray paint your numbers on your curb for $5? And some people told me no. And I just didn't have a problem with it. The <laughs> people that told me, yes, I got a $5 bill. Yeah. So it was like, I wasn't uncomfortable with rejection. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I just wanted, that was like a sign though, that I was interested in. I mean, the other example would be, I wanted to get my like babysitting license from the YMCA is or like at 11 or whatever yeah. the earliest age, maybe it was 12. I don't remember, but like most girls were waiting till they could drive to babysit. And I was like, well, what do you, do you need to do to do it sooner? Oh yeah. And then I did that class and that way it was sounds like, like you were just like really motivated as a kid. Just, just to, and these are early whatever. signs that yeah. I didn't even, I was not aware of that I was yeah. starting to become an yeah. entrepreneur. And then I remember my, um, my fun, this is a funny story, but, uh, I think it's junior or senior year. I was in a econ class and I didn't even know what econ stood for. I was like econ, whatever econ is, but economics. Right. And, um, Mr. Leonard was my teacher and 
he did this whole thing where you had to, um, it was like a big day coming up where you had to partner with someone and you had to create a mini business where you needed to sell food at the fair for the elementary school as a senior. So the seniors were going to have these little two person, probably not approved by the FDA now, right? To <laughs> have teenagers handle food and sell it oh, to yeah. kids or whatever. But, um, at the time it was what we did in our school. So I partnered with someone and I just remember telling my partner, Bonnie, I said, Hey, let's do, um, the, the cheapest, I was like, let's do the cheapest food because I want to win. And she was like, what do you want to win? I was like, I don't know, but there's going to be some sort of like um, acknowledgement at the end of the senior project, I'm sure, for who had the most profitable booth. And she was like, okay. And so I was like, what's the p food product that we could do the cheapest possible? And she's, and we just, bantered we decided to just do nachos because you get a big jar at like sam's club of the nacho cheese and then cheapest bag of chips and then the little trays so it was like wholesale maybe like 55 cents oh, and we yeah. sold it for four dollars or something like that yeah and so we did make the, we made the most money and we were very minimal on our like booth aesthetics we just like dressed really cute like very hispanic with our pinatas and everything or uh, not pinata, our sombreros and we had pinatas at the booth but i'm just saying like that was an indication to me right then. Mr. Leonard said to me, I think you're meant to go into business. Like you're, you're thinking mm -hmm. along the lines, even though it was so basic. Yeah. You're just thinking along the lines of like, how can this make a profit? Still, I didn't listen though. I didn't pay attention to that. I thought I should be a teacher. So I went into education and all of that. And I'm like, pay attention people to those little signs because you probably have a bent to entrepreneurship and it started when you were young. Yeah, and so totally. it's just like, pay attention to those things because man, I would have been a little bit farther along if I had thought of that when I went into college, I would have done business, right. Instead yeah. of education, but I learned business through the school of hard knocks. I just think that, um, that there are more entrepreneurs in this world than they believe. It just requires probably a gift of faith yeah. because you have to have a comfortability with risk. Well, um, that makes me think of my next question, which is in entrepreneurship or business or leadership, do you think that there's something that people have or do that makes some succeed and some others not? Like, is it a skill they have? Is it, you know, um, a quality that they have? Is it they came from a certain background? You know, what do you think makes some people succeed, specifically in business, I guess, mm -hmm. and some people maybe not? I think there's this is my opinion now. I think there's only one reason why some people succeed and some people don't. Okay. I want to hear it because I feel like you might, I might feel the same way, but go. Yeah. I think they have to be okay with a reward much later. Okay. They have to work so hard mm -hmm. knowing what the end goal is Yeah, and not stop. So it's like very, a very hardworking person that has the end in mind. Mm -hmm. And I think you could like give anybody a different background. You could come from greatness or not greatness, hardship yeah. or not hardship. But if you are a person that's going to work hard and you're completely okay with the result being way down the line. Okay. That's going to help you get through any obstacle, any hard times, yeah. any, you know, lack of team or whatever might come your way. So do you feel like if you summed it up, the word would be tenacity, maybe like to keep going? Yeah. I mean, a, a grittiness, a, um, a belief that that is possible yeah. as long as you follow the plan, mm -hmm. regardless of what obstacles may come in the way. I mean, it's just, it's so funny to me that people start stuff and then we're not successful. They're like, well, that didn't work and they quit. And I'm like, no, it's just hard. Yeah. I follow this, um, page on Instagram and I think it's called the guide culture and they teach sales. And I remember, um, she said something like, you know, I hear a lot of comments from people like, Oh, it's not working. It's not working. What I'm doing is not working. And she said, well, maybe it just hasn't worked yet. You know, like just keep going and just keep doing what you're doing. And like you said, to keep the end goal in mind, cause it, it does take a lot more work than people think, you know, it's not mm -hmm. going to happen overnight. So no. Okay. I love that. Um, one thing I really admire about you, Mindy, is that, you know, as a female entrepreneur, I think a lot of women try to like just juggle it all. You know, we've heard for a while um, now, oh, you can have it all. You know, women can have it all. We can have a career. And ever since women started working, we can have a career, we can have a family. But I see a lot of people who try to have it all and, and can't, don't juggle it very well. And you um, seem to really be doing everything very well. Like um, you do 
kind of juggle it all. But what I love about you is wherever you are, you are like 100% in it, you know? Um, cause I know you're busy and you're a mom and you're an entrepreneur. You have multiple businesses and you have a family, but you really do do it really well. Can you tell me what, like why you think you can juggle it all mm-hmm. in, in a very, you know, yeah, tr- it's it's a really it is tricky. It is tricky, and I would say that um, that's a huge compliment. I don't know that I do it all well all the time, but thank you. <laughs> um, I I also want to acknowledge the absolute truth of what you're saying. I feel like we've been um, I actually want to write a book about this, but we've been saying to women for a hundred years, "You are equal." you can do everything a man can do. Mm -hmm. You should go to college. Mm -hmm. You should have a right to vote. Mm -hmm. You should have a career. But we have not talked or disrupted this, the idea that is she supposed to also then run the home? Yeah. And you know that the man hasn't been expected to run the home and work. Yeah. Um, and nobody said, okay, so, and I think there's a pressure for us Mm -hmm. to run the home and run this career and be a good mom. I mean, it's, it's like, who's talking about all that? I appreciate the right to vote. I appreciate that. I appreciate that we've been encouraged to get our education and I've gotten higher education degrees. I appreciate all of that. And I feel called to the workplace. Yeah. So that means that I should not also carry the burden of figuring out everything at home, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that that's a really healthy discussion for you and your partner to have and say, if we both work full time, how does the home responsibility shake out in a fair manner? Mm -hmm. And we split that. Or if you're fortunate enough to get to a point where you can hire some of that, like a house cleaner, whatever, then that's a real big blessing. Right. Mm -hmm. But in the early age, we couldn't do that. We, we just decided who's doing what, how do we split it? Because we're both going after the career and parenting. So, so it's not like moms at every birthday or sorry, at every Christmas party at school, but we decide one of us is going to definitely be there. Yeah. Like we are always there for our kids, but we see it just as valuable. I was thinking about the birthday parties. I mean, we're both at our own kids' birthday parties, but when our kids attend a birthday party, especially when they're early on and little, can I tell you how many Jordan's probably been to more other kids' birthday parties than myself mm-hmm. because they're on Saturdays and where am I on Saturdays mm-hmm. in my really busy bridal shop yeah. that is bringing in half of the household income. So like we both are contributing to that. And I think we need to really pause for women here and say, if you're working just as much as your husband, then why is that entire home life put on you as well? Mm-hmm. I think that needs to be a very important conversation you have with your spouse. But back to being like present wherever I am, I do think that that is part of my success mm-hmm. is that I was coached really early on. I hired a business coach and I absolutely recommend business coaching and mentoring and program. Mm-hmm. Um, investing I, I, in yourself, really. Investing mm-hmm. because you'll you'll actually, the ROI on it is mm-hmm. just incredible. I agree. But when I was early on in my business, I had a coach and um, I was dealing a lot with mom guilt. Mm-hmm. And I said, how do I get rid of this? You know, mm-hmm. this is just like eating me up. And he said, and well, we have first, a whole episode on that. And yeah, I do. And just a <laughs> just quick, just be multiple episodes mm, probably. Yeah. And just a quick one liner. He said to me, was like, um, you'll do so much better if you, um, are all the way wherever you are at that mm-hmm. moment, because you can't be mom while you're at work. So yeah. why multitasking think about it? is a myth? Well, it's like, why think about that? Yeah. So, or while I'm at being mom, why mm-hmm. I think about work? Because yeah. I can't, can't change anything. Mm-hmm. So whatever's happening there. And so once you let go of that, it's yeah. like, it's, it's an illusion of control that you might have control of both places, but it's totally just an illusion. We never had control yeah. of either place. We, so why not just decide to be completely present where you are is kind of how I've chosen to live. Um, well, I think you're, it makes you more productive in that yes. if you're trying to be in multiple places, you're really halfway in, you know, if you try to yeah. be everywhere, you can't. Yeah. And then I would say, um, deciding who gets the priority when it comes to your time. Mm -hmm. So when, um, you say, you know, have good family, I'm really grateful because my husband and I have decided to say our family gets the first choice of time. Mm -hmm. So that's us, our kids, our relationship, 
they get first priority. And then I feel like nothing else can go well unless Mm -hmm. everything at home is going well. Mm -hmm. Because when you go do everything else and home life isn't great, Mm -hmm. then you show up a mess. You absolutely show up a mess. So we've decided to just make sure the home life is peaceful, is good, so that when we do show up everywhere else, like we are settled and can bring our best selves. So like I said, I, I just think letting go of the illusion of control, being very present, of, to where you are yeah. and then prioritizing first your family before your, your, um, finances is important. Yeah. And I know you've mentioned how valuable our time is. In fact, we have, um, a similar saying about that, you know, you could always make more money, but you can't make more time. And when you're a mom, you see that especially because your kids grow up so fast, right? you know, and so just being present, but I would say, you know, that's really definitely a gift that you have. Um, I mean, I remember, you know, when we were working in your bridal shop, you're running around and you're busy. But if you are speaking with me, you are so attentive, even if it's only for two minutes. And there could be, you know, a lot Chaos. going on around you. But you give that time to me fully, even though I know you have to be here and here and here. Um, and I really appreciate that because, it, you know, it just really shows your heart and how much you value people as well. And not just like making money or having this place or, you know, doing all the things. So, um, that's a gift. And I think not a lot of people can even live in the moment, but also value a person that's standing right in front of them, you know? Yeah. I, I so appreciate you saying that because I try to teach everyone in my life that Mm -hmm. skill. I say, you know, first of all, we have no cell phones on the floor in our business because I feel like it's completely rude to Mm -hmm. be distracted by Mm -hmm. looking at your text while you're talking to someone. Um, I say, lock in, look at their eyes, Mm -hmm. try to actually hear what they're saying Mm -hmm. before you, our brains kind of already assume what you're about to say next. Mm -hmm. And so you got to stop. You have to actually intentionally tell yourself to stop thinking of what I think they're going to say next. And let's just actively listen Mm -hmm. And not just, just totally be open to what they might say. Yeah. And then when you actively listen, you don't already start to prepare your response. Mm. And that's like a big mistake we make as listeners is we, we're just already assuming what they're going to say and we're starting to prepare what we're going to say next. And that's like a big um, red flag in communication. Mm. Actively listening is just being open, not preparing a response. And actually it's better to take a minute before you respond. Think about if we all took a few more seconds before we responded, Mm -hmm. what we might be better at saying versus um, losing our cool or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I try to teach my team just to actively listen, look people in the eyes, don't glance around the room because that's that's showing that you are searching for someone else more important to talk to. Totally. And that is just such a skill that we all need to develop, especially in this world that is so fast paced. You know, my husband's always telling me, that, um, you know, we, we listen to respond and not to really understand, you know, and I think that that's a skill that everyone can (laughs) work on. And, you know, in the service industry, the better you can listen to your, to your clients and your team, the better you're going to succeed because, you know, people want to feel valued. They want to feel like they matter in that moment. And I just want to say that you are really good at Oh, that. Thank so you. I appreciate that. Um, when you were first starting, was there somebody that you looked up to as like, I want to be like that person or which is so good. This is a very good question. Okay. When I first started, mm-hmm. I could not find someone mm-hmm. that I could look up to in this industry or just in general, in or? general, in general, okay. I was looking for a mom slash entrepreneur slash Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm. I couldn't find anybody with all three. No. Because you talk about, you know, looking for someone who's several steps ahead of you. Mm -hmm. As um, So what I did was I found one of each. Okay. I found an entrepreneur that I really respected, Uh read the books, listened to, obsessive, right? I found a mom that I really looked up to, listen, read the books, obsessive. And I found a Christian person that I'm like, their faith really inspires me. Mm. I want to like listen to their teachings, read their studies and things like that. But now you are a woman who has all those things. Was that like an intentional or did you just, you were like, I want to be this for someone else. Yeah. I would say at first that was not my goal in this season in my life. That's my goal. 
my goal is to be someone that someone else that a Christian working mom can look up to. Well, I so appreciate you sharing everything with me, Mindy, yeah. and I appreciate this podcast and everything that it does for people, women, women entrepreneurs, Christians, just anyone, even my son, I've told you, my 11-year-old son loves listening to this podcast, so last night, um, I told you I would tell you what he said, I was watching the episode, because I usually listen to it in my car, and yeah. so it's interesting because you can hear so much through someone's voice, like, I know how engaged you are and how excited you are, and there's so much you can just hear in their voices, but... I don't ever watch the video. So last night I was watching the one with your team, which was awesome. And he knew I was coming on the show, you know, and he's like, well, what, you know, what questions are you going to ask her? And I was like, well, I have a whole list of things. And he knows that I've worked with you, but he doesn't know that you have a bridal shop. He doesn't know like how. So he just thinks your podcast is your work. <laughs> and so which it is my favorite work right now. It's well, so, so I'm special. watching the video and he sees it and he's like, he's got this entrepreneur mind, which I've told you about before. And he's watching it and he's like, I go, is there any questions you want me to ask her? And he goes, yeah, I want you to ask her how much she makes on her podcast. Oh, <laughs> good he's got an, he's, he's an entrepreneur. So he's thinking, you know, what could yes. I do? What could I do? I love that question. Well, first of all, um, I make nothing right now on my <laughs> podcast. I kind of laugh about it because people are like, you do this podcast and you pay out of your own pocket for mm -hmm. it. And I would say, yes, I do because it's my purpose project. And yes. when you have a project that has purpose, mm -hmm. you will pay out of your own pocket to make something happen. Mm -hmm. So it's just my hope that this podcast and show on YouTube really encourages and inspires others. And grows. And, and if, if, they, if I am helping them yeah. to become the best version of themselves, to live a life worth celebrating, then this podcast and show is 100% worth every penny I've spent on it. So, so far it is not paying me. It is, I am paying for it, but I do have a dream that it will be, um, picked up, sponsored and all of those things. I believe it will be in the future. Well, I think it's so valuable. And I tell everyone I know about it. I'm like, go listen to this podcast. You'll love it. Thank you, Jen. Yes. I appreciate it. Okay. Let me tell you my favorite drink. Yes. I'm so excited because for this today. We're mm -hmm. not having your favorite drink no. because I was technically being interviewed. I yes. brought my favorite drink. Okay. I love it. Okay. So this is an iced Americano. Mm-hmm. So instead of a latte that is full of milk, mm -hmm. this is less calories. It's almost all water okay. is the way I tell myself. <laughs> Anyways, it's an iced Americano yes. with cream uh -huh. and a splash of simple syrup. Okay. Just a splash. Because I know you don't like too sweet things. I don't like too sweet. Okay. Well, I've weaned myself off of too yeah. sweet. I mean, we could all love sweet, but just in effort for health. Yeah, totally. So this is my favorite drink. So cheers. Okay, I love it. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thanks for being on my show today. Thank you. And this if has you been guys fun. enjoyed some of the things we chatted about, please, it was very vulnerable. I was going to say, please write some of the things you enjoyed hearing about below or even any future questions that you may want me to answer on the show. And thanks to Jen for joining me and interviewing me on this episode. Um, so again, if you can can subscribe, like, share with your friends. We'd really appreciate it. And we hope to see you next time on the Something New Show. Take care. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the show, rate, review, and share with a friend. Also, follow the Something New Show on Instagram and Facebook. If you want a fuller experience, watch the show on YouTube to help you create a life worth celebrating.